Do you want to learn how to generate fake data for your Ruby on Rails application? Then stick around to find out how. I'm Thomas, and this is Bear with Brain Trust Digital, where full stack developers obsess with learning. If you're interested in learning full stack web development, please consider subscribing below. In this Rails testing tutorial, we're going to walk through how to install and use the Faker gem. We'll walk through the entire process, so don't worry. But before we get started, I wanted to briefly touch on why you might want to use the Faker gem. Good, realistic fake data makes it much easier to get a better sense of the look, feel, and function of your app. This data also helps to dramatically improve the quality of your test suite. By not knowing the fake data that's going to be used ahead of time, it helps to ensure that you're covering edge cases within the spec itself. This gem saves you a ton of time by generating quality and realistic fake data for you. You can generate things, for example, like a user, that user's email address, phone numbers, business names, or even business addresses. The list goes on and on. Essentially, Faker saves you tons of time by providing this quality data in formats that make it really easy to test things, like validations, which we'll cover in the future. So with that, let's get into the tutorial to cover how to install the Faker gem for testing into your Ruby on Rails application. Here in the terminal, the first thing we're gonna to want to do is check out a new branch for our feature. We'll do so with get checkout dash B and then the name of our branch. We're going to call this Faker. Now that we've created our branch, let's go ahead and go through the installation process. So the first thing we're going to do is navigate to rubygems.org. And then in the search bar, we're going to type in Faker. And we'll click on the first one here, the Faker gem. And scroll down in the right sidebar, then you can go ahead and click the uh, homepage. This will take you to the GitHub repository for the Faker gem. So we're going to scroll down here to find the instructions. As you can see from the instructions, you can either run gem install Faker or you can add it to your gem file. We're gonna go ahead and add this to our gem file. So let's copy the line, flip back over to our application, which we just have open here in Sublime. We're gonna navigate to the gem file, which is just in the root of your application. So here we're just going to add this to the development and test block, break down a line, and then enter in the faker gem. So we'll paste our code, we'll save, and then flip back over to the terminal. We can run bundle, install, to pull this gem down locally. So we'll go ahead and clear our screen. Before making changes, it's typically nice to go ahead and run your test suite to ensure there are no errors. As you can see, we have five examples and zero failures. In our case, that means we're using RSpec. If you'd like a tutorial covering how to install and use RSpec, I have one that I'll link in the card as well as the description below. Now that we know we have a clean test suite, let's go ahead and add Faker. Here in Sublime Text, we have our spec directory opened up and we're gonna be using Faker in our factories. We're using factories to help stub out our data and we're using the factory bot Rails gem to accommodate that. If you need help setting that gem up in your project or the basic usage to utilize that gem's capabilities within your test suite, I'll link a video walking through that topic in the card as well as the description below. Let's go ahead and start in our categories factory. As you can see, we're using a sequence to create the name for our categories. So categories in our factory will come out as category one, category two, category three, and so on. The advantages of using a gem like Faker allows you to get more varied and random content. As you can quickly see in our example, all names of our categories will follow a similar format and have a consistent length. Having random and varied names will help us to account for things like what a shorter category name may look like on the page, or maybe a really long category name where we'd want to truncate with an ellipsis or something similar. The fact that these will be randomly generated by Faker helps to eliminate any sort of like uh, false positives in our tests, meaning our test suite is passing a particular spec based on coincidence as opposed to uh, being able to accommodate uh, any random value provided uh, as a name. So if we flip back over to the browser really quickly, you can see the usage section here. 
So as you can see, here's the basic usage. There are several different categories of content generators. There are generators for things like addresses, as well as like company type information. I'll click on company real quick so you can see what that looks like. And then these are all generators that, that you may need to generate fake company data, like a company name or a logo or an industry profession, that sort of thing. So if we go back, you can scroll through the list on your own time. I'm not gonna create data for each one of these. Uh, we're just gonna pick a few to kind of show you how this typically works, uh, and then leave you to explore the other, the other generators for yourself. So for our categories, we're gonna use the Faker Hipster data generator, uh, frankly, just because it kind of makes me laugh. Then you can see the different methods you can call. For example, a word or words. Uh, you can also optionally pass data like numbers in this case to get uh, four words in this example. They've got things like sentences and paragraphs in this particular data generator. We're just gonna stick with the word method for our generator. So we're gonna go ahead and copy this, flip back over to Sublime Text. Here, we no longer need a sequence because we are going to use Faker to generate this data. So we'll get rid of that line here. And then within the braces, we're gonna replace this category sequenced data with a call to faker, hipster, and then the word method. So we'll save that, we'll flip back over to the console and rerun our specs. As you can see, that still passes. So that proves we haven't broken anything in our specs, but if you wanna see what's actually happening here, we can go ahead and load up the Rails console by typing in Rails C for console, and we can paste that exact same command, faker, hipster, word. As you can see, we're getting some hip words returned. These words will then be used for our category instances names. So we're gonna go ahead and exit out of here and flip back over to Sublime Text. The next factory you can see is our role factory. Here, we don't want to randomize these. In fact, we wanna actually keep these very specific names. So we're just gonna go ahead and skip this factory. Next is our users factory. As you can see, we're hard-coded here to one of the most prolific programmers of the last 30 years. Anybody recognize him? Creating multiple instances of a user factory would create multiple Dennis Nedrys. That's not really gonna help us here. It would be hard to run specs where these two users interact, and, and in general, it's just not a very good idea. So instead, let's replace this hard-coded data with some random faker data. If we flip back over to the browser, and then back out of the generated hipster data, you can scroll down and see there's some data devoted to generating names. As you can see, there are several methods. We're just gonna go ahead and use the first name and last name methods. Here in Sublime Text, we're going to replace Dennis with first name and Nedry with last name. Next, we can enter down and add email. Flipping back over to the browser, you can see there's nothing in here to account for email. Uh, so if we back up to the list of generators, here this one internet I happen to know contains something that will help. As you can see, there are email, and then you can pass in things like the name. Let's go ahead and grab this method for internet email. And we can paste that here in the code. Again, we can save, flip over to the terminal, we'll clear the screen, and then rerun our specs with our spec spec. As you can see, we're still green. If we flip back over to Sublime Text, we have one more factory, videos. If we open this factory up, you can see a couple areas that may cause us some problems. Here you can see we've very specifically written out a static title and YouTube ID. If we generated multiple video factory instances, that could be a bit confusing as they would all have the exact same title. So let's go ahead and fix this now. This time I won't flip back over to the browser. Um, as I'm sure you kind of get the pattern here, you'll just look for the category of data generator that you'd like to use and then go ahead and implement it in your factory. So in this case, we're gonna use a category of movies and use the title method. Next for YouTube ID, we're going to use the barcode data generator and the EAN. This is just gonna give us a random string that looks similar to a YouTube ID. Finally, position, we can just leave that as is. We want that to count up, and, and that will just kind of work like we'd expect and what we'd want anyway. Once again, we can save, flip over to the terminal, and go ahead and rerun our specs. As you can see, once again, we are still passing. So just remember, you can test these out in the Rails console. 
There's also one way that you can test them out in the specs. So if we flip back over to a user spec, for example, as you can see in this specific test, we are building a user and then we're passing in a first and last name. This way we can make sure that our full name method works exactly as expected. Since we're overriding the first and last name, the faker gem will not be used in this case. Just for the purposes of demonstration, let's go ahead and copy this. We'll comment out the correct code and instead just delete the portions of code where we're overriding this first and last name. If we delete those now and save and then rerun the spec, you'll see it fails, but you'll also get an opportunity to see how Faker populates the content. So in this case, they generated a user by the name of Patricia. If we run it again, they'll generate another fake name. In this case, Chris Daniel. I just wanted to quickly demonstrate the types of content that you can get from Faker. It's very realistic fake data, which really helps when testing. So now we can flip back over to this spec and fix it. Obviously we don't want that. We can go ahead and uncomment the original code so our spec will pass again. Here, if we clear out the screen and then run our spec one last time, we can ensure it's still passing. Now that we've confirmed that we've added the faker gem successfully and everything is still functioning as it should, we can commit our code to GitHub, our remote repository. To do so, first we will run get status. Here we can see all the changes we've made to the gem file, the gem file.lock, and of course the factories that we updated to utilize Faker. If you need help using Git or GitHub, I have a tutorial that I'll link in the card as well as the description below. Next, let's go ahead and stage all of our changes for a commit, git add dot. Typically you'd want to go file by file to ensure everything within those files would like to be added. In this case, we know we want to add everything, so I'm just gonna run add dot. Next, we'll run git commit, dash M, so we can pass in a message. In this case, we're just gonna say adds faker gem. Next, we'll run get push to push this code up to GitHub, our remote repository. At this point is when I would typically recommend that if you are working with a coworker, you create a pull request in GitHub and then have your coworker review your code. This is a nice process as it often helps capture any potential issues before they would get pushed into production. It also helps ensure that you have a consistent style and formatting that you and your team have agreed upon. In my case, my coworker is sleeping per usual, so we're just gonna go ahead and merge this branch back into our main branch. To do so, we'll run get checkout master, then get merge, and the name of our branch, faker. Finally, we can run get push to push this code into master. Typically at this point is when I would deploy this code using Capistrano into production. If you'll recall, we scoped this gem to only be in the development and test group. And the code itself is only ever run in testing. So there's not really any point for us to deploy this into production or rather it won't change the outcome of anything in production. So I hope you've found this useful. And if you have, if you'd consider liking or subscribing or potentially even sharing with somebody who you think may like this type of content, I'd really appreciate it. Please don't forget to leave your comments and questions or tutorial requests in the comment section below. And with that, I'll catch you in the next AWS Rails tutorial.